Hi, welcome to another edition of Biology in a Minute. I'm Miss Felpish. Today we're going to be learning about another one of the organic macromolecules, this time proteins. As you can see from the picture, proteins are what muscles are made up of. Common examples of proteins you might eat would be meat or beans or fish, but proteins are also really important inside cells. Uh, proteins are used to make up enzymes, they're used to make up cell structures, um, especially transport proteins that sit in cell membranes. So when we get into cells, you're going to see a lot of the things that cells are actually made of are proteins, just like a lot of the things that your body is made of are also proteins. You'll notice when we look at the monomer that makes up proteins, there's a brand new um, element that we haven't seen yet, and that's nitrogen. The carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are the same as we've seen before, but the addition of nitrogen gives us the name of the protein monomer, which is amino acid, and amino is referring to the protein. You'll notice that there's this basic structure of the protein, and hooked to the basic structure, there's an R group. R is just a name for a variable in this case. There are about 20 different R groups that can be hooked to that main backbone and depending on the chemical nature of the R group, that specific amino acid can have different chemical properties. Depending on the chemical properties of the 20 amino acids that get put together, kind of like beads on a string, um, then the protein will begin to take on shapes. There's the primary structure, which is the order of the amino acids. So if you're thinking of the beads on a string analogy, that's the order of the beads. Red bead, yellow bead, green bead is the primary structure. Then there's the secondary structure. Secondary means two, two, and there's one. Um, and the secondary structure, once you put those beads together, they'll start to spontaneously form these different shapes. Um, if you think of an old-fashioned telephone cord, the kind that coiled, that would be um, a secondary protein shape. Or they might begin to fold into a beta pleated sheet, and that is the secondary structure. And then once those secondary structures take form, then you get into the tertiary structure. And you may not be familiar with the word tertiary, but it means three, so it's the third level of organization. And then that tertiary structure is how those secondary shapes begin to sort of glob together and form a... Uh, usually a big glob kind of shape that's the tertiary structure of the protein. We'll get more into details later, but the directions for the order of those beads on a string, um, those directions are carried on the DNA. And the DNA directions get copied, they get sent to the ribosome, um, and the ribosome is what's going to actually put the amino acids together in the right order to make a protein. Every different protein is going to have its own order of beads on a string, which is going to form its own secondary and tertiary shape, and that's what's going to allow the proteins to do the work that they do. So, once those proteins get made, they form secondary, tertiary, and even quaternary, which is four. Um, level shapes, and this is an example of how some of those might look. They're really pretty, aren't they? Um, but depending on the shape it has, that'll help it do the job that it needs to do. Um, it might form a transport protein, which is going to let it carry a molecule from one place to another. It could form a channel, um, which is going to let things get inside and outside the cell. Um, and a lot of the times when we talk about proteins, we're going to talk about their activity as enzymes. And enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. So really, a lot of the work and the structure of cells is all carried out by proteins. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Biology in a Minute.